When did a game of hide and seek go horribly wrong? Oh, I have a good one. Didn't happen to me, but a friend of mine. But I was in that game of hide and seek. Here I go point. When I was 8, I was at a birthday party of my neighbor's daughter. We had mutual friends, and one of them, let's call him Toby, wasn't really the brightest, we all weren't, but he took the cake, like eating a dead wasp once, and then wondering why his mouth was swollen. Anyway, the daughter then all challenged us to a game of hide and seek. For context, they lived on a farm which wasn't the smallest, so there was plenty of space to hide. But to not draw this game too lengthy, we all agreed to only hide in the barn and on the main plot, and not the meadow behind it, it only took the daughter about 15 minutes to find me, and the other kids invited to the party, except for said Mr. Darkhead Toby. After about half an hour of searching for him, we started to get concerned. By this time, it was about 5.30pm and we were all getting ready to go home, but Toby was nowhere to be found. Our parents agreed to let us stay until 7pm, hoping that he was found till then, after Toby wasn't found, Toby's parents called the cops and a search squad was sent out. Still no sign of him, the cops gave up. The next morning, I woke up to my parents telling me, in a tone of relief, that Toby was found. Point apparently what happened was that Toby somewhat got lost on said meadow and was only found 8 hours later standing on the side of a road that was 4 miles away with his shorts and t-shirt all ripped and damaged. He was only found after a relative spotted him with his headlights. Oh, did I mention that Toby was new to the area and didn't know where what was. We are still friends to this day, 18 years later, and whenever we are drunk or really bored, we bring this story up and just laugh our guts out about it. About him not being very bright, yeah. He now has his master's degree in mechanical engineering point so glad this story ended well, or else my life would be different now. TLDR at the bottom point I was about 7 years old, and we were playing in the dark at grandma's house. I don't remember the exact reason, but I popped into the game a little late, and was waiting on my brother or cousin to come rushing around the house, and I was set to beat them back to base point as they came running around the corner, I turned and started to run. I didn't pay attention to where I was, and tripped on the wire supporting a newly planted tree. I fell to the ground, my wrist landing on a rock. I didn't know exactly what happened, but I do know it hurt. Badly point run to mom and dad, bullying my eyes out. Dad took one look and knew what happened, so off to the hospital we went. Into the emergency room, and dad tells the admissions nurse, we need to see a doctor, my son broke his arm. She got a little huffy and says back something along the lines of what makes you so sure. Then dad lifted the damp towel that was covering my arm, and it was immediately apparent. She just started repeating oh my god, and dad had to calm her down, so I wouldn't start freaking out again point I don't know how much more force it would have taken, but it was a radial fracture of the two bones in my forearm, nearly compounded. I still remember seeing a couple bumps on my arm, but not much else point tldr. Tripped on a tree, broke my arm, made the admitting nurse freak out. Well the summer after senior year of high school we had a hangout at a friend's house as a celebration before we all went off to school and the one girl I liked in high school showed up. It was then decided that we should place hide and seek, but normal hide and seek is too boring, so we would play hide and seek in the dark. Well, we are playing the game, and I'm the seeker. You see, there was this one door that some people were hiding behind, including the girl, and I decided to try and push it open. It did not budge at all, so I decided to push a little harder. Just with my arms though I wasn't putting too much effort into the door, because I did not know who or what was behind it. Later I found out the reason it didn't budge was because one of my buddies had proper a small trampoline against it. Well, after a few seconds it gives way rather easily game continues and ends, so the someone turns the lights on and lo and behold, I had broken the door by snapping it out of its frame. I was even able to turn it in such a way that it twisted on its diagonal axis, and one tip went straight into the damp ceiling and crumpled a big pipe, that's why it didn't fall and make a noise, so no one noticed until the game was over. 
Afterwards I freak out a little because, you know, property damage, and also the one time I break something is the one time the girl I like decided to show up. Also immediately after the lights turn on the dude that propped up the trampoline decided to dip before we call the host's parents down. Then we all try and fix the door while some of friends are making cringy comment to the girl saying she'd like oh my god, lol at how strong meteor underscore smashes those powerful arms. In the end, it all turned out fine and we still can laugh about it so it gets all fine. When I was about 8 years old I was playing with two other kids on our street. One of my friend's dad was a cop with one of those dated patrol cars in his driveway. He decided to hide in the trunk of his dad's car that he was able to jimmy open using his finger in a broken trunk lock. I was seeking my friend led me to the trunk that was cracked open a few inches and my buddy popped up to scare me. For some reason I decided to slam the trunk shut as a joke. I guess. As soon as I did this, we realized we could not get him out. He was yelling in fear. Me and the other kid did not dare go up to his dad's front door to tell him because we were scared of going to jail or something super reasonable like that happening to us. After a few minutes of panicking, trying to get him out, I hear my name being called from my house. My grandma was visiting and it was time for dinner. I sat at the dinner table eating as fast as I could pretending everything was fine while my friend was locked in the trunk outside. I piled it down, made an excuse and went back outside. My friend had found a latch in the trunk and gotten himself out by the time I got there. We didn't have to tell his dad and my parents never found out. I was just talking to my sir the other night laughing about this story and decided to share with you guys TLDR. Locked a friend in car trunk during a game. Left him in there while I ate dinner. I'm a bad friend. We had played hide and seek in the dark at a friend's house. His parents were away for the weekend. So we were able to turn every light off and only allowing us to use our phone lights in order to find a hiding spot or seek. My friend and I had decided to go to his front yard and hide by the pool pump which is surrounded by a short bring wall. I had climbed into a tree and because my legs are being pulled to my chest, my pockets were too tight for my phone, so I decided to put my phone in my shirt pocket. My friend, on the other hand, had decided to hide behind the pool pump where my other friend, the one who actually lives in this house, uses this part of his yard to keep all the old broken childhood toys and such, like a small plastic slide. The area is very closed off with bushes, so it doesn't look very messy when looking from outside the bushes. While I was hiding in the tree, I saw my friend, who went to hide in the bushes area by the pool pump, started limping towards the house. I immediately understood something was wrong. He had blindly jumped into the bushes and landed in a broken plank that had a rusty nail. The nail went through his shoe into his foot. Seeing him limping back inside, I decided to leave my spot to help friend. As I had jumped out the tree, I forgot my phone was in my shirt pocket, so upon landing, my phone flew out and completely shattered on the brick layer around the pool. It was a serious series of unfortunate events. So to give some background, it was the morning after my brother's 10th birthday party and his friends were still over from the sleepover. My parents house had a fully finished basement that was often used as the place for all the kids to hang out and play. I was only 5 at the time, was playing hide and seek in a fairly large basement, but still small for hide and seek. I had the brilliant idea of hiding behind the TV and TV stand, was a large tube TV maybe 30 inches, and there was a DVD rack to the left of the TV stand that stored the VHS tapes. I was small, so I was able to hide on top of the subwoofer for the sound and couldn't be seen from in front of the TV. Well this all turned bad when the three other hiding places were checked and behind the TV was checked. I was found out and tried to make a break for base. Well the only safe way from behind the TV was where Joe guarding. So with the logic of a 5 year old, I thought I could jump over the DVD rack to get past Joe to get to base. Well I didn't make the jump. Foot got huked on the rack, I collapsed onto the glass coffee table and shattered it. I got rushed to the ur, happened to need stitches for all the glass that went into my chest, and had the glass gone a millimeter deeper it would have punctured my heart. We were told many times by my parents to not to play hide and seek and run around in the basement. Funny as you don't listen to rules until you find out why point TLDR played hide and seek in my parents basement as a kid. 
fell onto a glass coffee table and went to the air for glass that went into my chest. This is kinda stupid, but I was playing hide and seek with my sisters when I was like in 4th grade. It was dark outside and you could see anything, so I Thomas it would have been a great idea to grab my blanket, which was black all around, and pit it over me while he's on my trampoline point. So I'm under a big fluffy blanket, on a considerably comfy trampoline, and it's night time. I fall asleep point my hiding spot was so good, none of my sisters could find me. Eventually they get my mom involved and that's where she'd got started point mind you, I'm still asleep during all his, I only know this, because they told me afterwards. T my mom and stepdad start freaking out thinks I ran away. My mom gets in her car and my stepdad gets in his, they drive around the neighbors to see if I'm out there. Of course, they don't see me point they were driving around for like half an hour eventually I wake up point the way my room is makes it to where you can see the trampoline from out of my window and vice versa. I wake up and I see that my bedroom light is on and my mom walking around talking on the phone. I assumed she was loosing to see if I took anything with me, obviously, I didn't. So my mom was on the phone with the police point I didn't know at the time, I thought she was just talking on the phone and wandering around the house. Everything does rant stuff when on the phone and I saw no difference point. So I get off the trampolines, my blanket is wrapping around me, and I wall through the back door and sit on my living room couch point my mom walks out of my room in tears and sees me on the couch, my sisters are in my parents room and my stepdad is still looking for me point she asks me where I was, and I tell her she doesn't believe me. The cops come, and she makes me talk to them, based they ask how everything is with me and stuff, nothing too bad point I thought it ended there but no. My mom had the cops come to my school the next day, to talk to me point the most embarrassing thing to ever happen, is having the dean walk into your 4th grade class, and tell you to come with him. I was terrified to see the cops there point they took me to the guidance counselor's office and just asked stuff like what I wanted to do when I grow up, family life, stuff like that. It actually wasn't too bad and I got to miss class time. I was probably 11 or 12 and I was very good friends with the next door neighbor kids. They consisted of two brothers one a year younger than me and the other three years younger and a sister who was two years older. I went over to their house all the time to play games. One day we decide to play hide and seek inside their house. I'm hiding first, and I find a great spot in the shower with the curtain closed. Some time passes and everyone is found besides me. I hear the door to the bathroom open, and one of the brothers and sister are talking about where I could be hiding. The door then closes, and I think nothing of it, and stay as quiet as possible. I then hear the toilet seat go up, and realize the situation I'm in. The sister is using the bathroom and dropping the kids off at the pool while I'm directly across from her hiding behind the shower curtain. I was terrified the whole time hoping she wouldn't look in the shower and find me. I stayed as silent as I could until I heard her leave. I immediately left because I didn't to be found in there and raise any suspicion. Unfortunately I left a little too soon and they all watch me walk out of the bathroom. The brother a year younger than me immediately starts yelling me and sister were in the bathroom together. I just kept denying it, but the sister kept looking at me really confused and seemed to be wondering if I really was or not. I went home as soon as possible and gave it a couple days before I went back over. I have two stories. One was with my brother, another a childhood friend, two separate occasions. First, when I was about 6 or so, we went to visit some family at my uncle's house. All us kids oh hide and seek would be a great idea so off we went. My uncle at the time was kind of an amateur race car driver and built this racing simulation seat and had the pedals and everything nailed to this little 2x4 boards. Well there was some sharp corners on it that had sheet metal nailed on the outside of it to reinforce it. Well, we all decided to hide in the basement where this prototype gaming chair was and my brother went to go hide behind it. He slipped going around behind it and fell head first into one of the sheet metal wrappings and sliced his forehead wide open. Blood everywhere 13 stitches to close that bad boy up. It was the most traumatic thing I saw as a child other than the childhood friend. We were playing hide and seek at the neighbor's farm and they were redoing the tin roof on the barn. 
there were some scrap pieces laying on the ground next to a couple of round hay bales. Now, if may of you have seen those tin pieces, they are quite and thin and can cut you pretty easily. Well, our friend thought it would be a good idea to climb the bales and get on top of the barn roof and hide on top. When he jumped from the top bale, his foot got caught up in the plastic and it pulled him to the ground on one of those pieces of tin and sliced his throat. We thought he was dead. By the time his dad got over there, it looked like he was murdered. Blood all over the side of the barn. He's screaming. We were all crying. This was a few years after my brother's incident. They rushed him to the emergency room, only to find out he missed his carotid artery by 0.5 millimeters. Luckiest kid I've ever met. But that was the last time I played hide and seek. We all kinda agreed that we wouldn't do again without really even saying it. My younger sister and I, who were 7 and 8 years old at the time, were playing nighttime hide and seek at my cousin's house while our parents enjoyed a few bottles of wine. We had stopped over for the night before catching a ferry to France the next morning. It was my turn to seek, so my sister and cousins went off to hide. I found my youngest cousin first, then shortly after found my sister hiding on a windowsill behind a closed curtain. I dramatically pulled the curtain to reveal her. She hopped down and ended up in a pile of tears on the floor. She was holding her right butt cheek. I comforted her and our game ended as our other cousin came to see what was wrong. Through tears she explained that she had hit the radiator under the window so she had jumped off. She wouldn't stop crying, so I took her down to our parents, where she sat on my mum's lap for a while. Once she'd calmed down, she came back to resume the game. But instead of hiding again, she burst back into tears. I took her down once again to my mum who was inspecting a spot of blood on her white jeans. It turned out my sister had ripped a 4 cm hole in her but cheek as she'd hit the corner of the radiator on the way down. My aunt, a GP who'd had a glass or two of wine, got my sober uncle to drive her, my sister and my mum to a hospital. She stitched my sister together and all was fine point the story doesn't end there though. The following day my parents, sister and I left my cousins to catch a ferry to France for our annual holiday. Halfway through the holiday my sister's stitches needed removing. Fearing that a French hospital may freak her out, my dad proceeded to remove the stitches himself. I will never forget the screams of my sister, they were truly blood cuddling. They sometimes feature in my nightmares. She was left with an gnarly, purple scar that has slowly faded over the last 20 years. It's still very visible though point my, but tingles and I grimace whenever I think of this story. I was the master of hide and seek as a kid. I was so good that almost twice they were about to call the cops when 4 or 5 year old me decided to play hide and seek without telling anyone. The first time was in my neighborhood and everyone were trying to find me in fear something bad happened. They had been looking for about an hour and were about to call the cops when my mom heard a very faint laugh coming from a bush point the second time I decided to do the same to my kindergarten teachers. There was a very small kitchen that was narrow and had a table and I hid under it. The table was actually normal size so if a normal kid would try and hide they would be found quickly. But I was no normal kid. I was an extremely patient kid and could stay still and quiet if I wanted so I was just hiding in plain sight under that table. All the teachers were looking and calling my name but could not find me. They called every parent to see if I had gone with them, but I wasn't there either. Finally they called my mom and said we can't find the kid. What do you mean you can't find the kid? So my parents rushed there and having done that little stunt before my mom suspected I was hiding, so she told them not to call the cops. Finally my mom came and hearing how serious her voice was I came out of hiding point I have always been one of the best players in hide and seek and almost always found last. One of my tricks to find the perfect hiding spot is to be it first, so you have plenty of time to look for the perfect spot. Also be quiet, and also it helps to be flexible, so you can be in weird shapes to fit the surrounding, and fit in small odd places. I'm kinda sad at, now that I'm older I'm not as small anymore, and I also have huge boobs, so it is hard to fit in some places. But I'm still amazing at hide and seek. So I was too, and hide and seek was one of my all time favorite games. 
It just happened to be Easter Sunday and my mom had me dressed in some ridiculous outfit which was undoubtedly cute and whatever, but let's be real, dress clothes do not afford the proper range of motion required for running jumping climbing trees as young kids are wont to do. We were told we could play a quick game, because dinner was almost ready, and I thought to myself, for whatever reason, I'm definitely going to win this round, even if it takes them forever to find me. I loved to climb trees, and I noticed when playing hide and seek people were less likely to look up. So this being a particularly full tree, I think it was some sort of spruce tree, I thought, perfect. I dove straight into the heart of that giant sap covered monstrosity of a tree, it had to be at least 40 feet tall, and within less than a minute I was halfway to the top. People started looking around by that point, and so I held as still as possible rightly commending myself on an excellent hiding spot. When they were out of view I didn't ever high, my goal not being quite to the top, as there was not good foliage up that high to conceal me completely. I wanted to get close though, so if someone did decide to investigate on the lower branches, I'd be hard to spot. Well so far my plan was a smashing success. Everyone was found except me, and it seemed like everyone had even given up. I didn't want to fall for some scheme, to have them win however, so I held my ground and waited. Finally the adults got involved in the search. This is awesome. The adults never play. I'm hiding so good my cousins can't find me, and they need help from the adults. So I'm just grinning my stupid two year old head off at my own genius and people actually start driving around, because apparently they think I'm lost or abducted or something like that. Turns out my grandmother was crying her head off inside because her firstborn child had drowned in a creek near their house, or their house was near a creek or something, I'm still unclear on this point, they rarely talk about it, so she's convinced herself I've drowned as well. My uncle is driving along the creek or canal, or whatever it was, and I'm fairly certain the cops were called point this entire time mind you, I'm just as oblivious as can be, thinking how fantastically epic this is, that so many people have been brought into, what in my mind, was the best game of hide and seek ever, when the neighbor lady walked over and was like, hey are you all looking for that kid up there? All the heads turn in unison and the gig was up. For some reason they were all mad. I never liked hide and seek, but my sister and cousins did. I always sit down and watch them play. One time I remember we couldn't find one of them, can't remember who though. There's too many of them to remember we were in my aunt's garden. Everyone had just got off their trampoline. The youngest says, let's play hide and seek. I think she was bobbing up and down for some reason. I don't know, she was a bit weird. Then my other cousin, who was my age says that they'll count turns around and starts counting to 30. My aunt has a giant garden, by the way, not too many places to hide though. They weren't allowed in the front garden either. She gets to 30, turns around and starts looking. She goes all the way to the bottom, while looking around just in case someone managed to hide near the broken slide or all the plastic over rocks and planks. She finally got to the bottom, where my uncle had built a bar, where the huge drum kit was stored. She goes in there to look. She finds the youngest on the stool, not even trying, and my sister hiding behind the drum kit with a pillow on her head point now three people are looking, and I could hear them all the way from the top of the garden. They all find another cousin underneath one of the brides, that went over all the stones in the pond. They said he was singing a song to a fish, insulting them. Then they all set out, to find the other one, the only one left. They went up and down the garden a few times, they couldn't find them. They went inside and searched the house, nowhere to be seen. When they told the adults, they told them to look harder fast forward 20 minutes, we are all beginning to get worried, because we all sucked at hiding and seeking, but by now, I usually would have witnessed 3 more rounds. Then we noticed that the dog had gone into next door's garden, because the hole in the fence was unblocked. Usually there was something blocking it tightly. My aunt called over asking if they had seen my cousin. They said no, but maybe their kids had. We asked them, they didn't know who he was at first, though according to my cousin, he went out with one of the girls we found him walking down the street about half an hour later. Three blocks away. He went from my aunt's garden, to next door's garden, climbed their tree house, and stayed there for a while. Saw everyone looking, and thought everyone was playing now, and booked it. 
Well it wasn't a game of hide seek, but it was cops and robbers. My mom had brought me and my brother to some business friend's house party. We didn't know anyone there, and we didn't know where we were, but there were other kids there. Like responsible adults they kicked us out and told us to play outside. We all would have been okay with that as it wasn't 8 at night. Some of us weren't even used to staying up past 7. So it was dark and there were 10 of us just outside. We were in a cul-de-sac neighborhood that edged on some woods. The woods were too thick so none of us were going in there. We all were just wondering about when someone said we should play tag. We all agreed, but my brother chipped in and said because it's dark we should play cops and robbers so we did. All was going well when the host kid, the kid who lived in the neighborhood, was being super bossy and just an all around jerk. He kept telling people what to do and cheating at the game and eventually for some reason he had a stick that he would swing at people. I wasn't there for the start of the altercation, but I did show up during it. One of the little girls was argue with the host kid. They were getting pretty heated, and the boy went to lunge at her. Me and some other kids went in to stop him, and we caught him on time. What none of us thought was that the little girl also came in to attack. She went to kick and over him directly in the nuts. It was so hard. We all heard it. Everyone froze and the kid screamed. He went down to the floor holding his precious bits. The little girl was standing there above him. It was almost scary. The kid was screaming in pain so hard he threw up. One of the kids must have called for help because the parents started coming out. We all started to settle down and then we went home. We haven't been back there since. I thought it was fun. When I was about 7, I found my older sister hiding in my closet. I went to tag her and she began screaming bloody murder and throwing shoes, books, toys, anything she could grab at me. My bedroom window was open and my neighbors thought she needed help so they called the police. Needless to say my sister got me pretty good, knocked out one of my teeth, and gave me a black eye and bloody nose. There was blood everywhere. I started crying and ran to get the phone to call my mom at work to tell on her. She then proceeded to try to stop me along with my other two sisters outside everyone could hear crying and three girls screaming, stop it, please don't. The cops kicked in our door and saw me beaten up in the kitchen crying. Surrounded by my three sisters with no adults in the house. My mom had to come home from work early and deal with explaining to the police that she could not get a babysitter for the day. Once things calmed down, she asked my sisters what happened and they all agreed that I fell off the couch and did it to myself. My mom then yelled at me and told me I wasn't allowed to play with my sisters anymore and I was sent to my room for the rest of the day point I was grounded for the rest of that summer and everyone blamed me for our family having to pay for a new door, rent going up, and my relationship with all my siblings had never recovered. In elementary school, I was the best at hide and seek among my friend group because I was the smallest so I could hide in places others couldn't. We were playing at my friend's house one evening, and I decided to hide in their basement, in the cabinet directly under the sink point it was a huge house and there were probably about 10 of us playing, so it wasn't strange for games to take a while. A few times, my friends walked right by me searching, but never thought to look in the cabinet. I even heard them shouting for me to come out, because they couldn't find me. But little me just knew that was a ruse. I'm not coming out until I'm found. I have to win, unbeknownst to me, my friends gave up on finding me and decided to play something different without saying anything to the adults or in my earshot. They took so long that I actually ended up falling asleep in my hiding place point I was rudely awakened, however, by a sudden squeal of metal and a loud rush of water in the pipe right next to my ear at which, of course, I screamed bloody murder. Someone else shrieked right back and finally opened the cabinet door. My friend's mom had come downstairs and turned on the sink, which is a much louder and more terrifying noise when the pipe is next to your head. Naturally, she was terrified when turning on the sink caused a human scream, so both of us got quite the adrenaline rush there point, and so began the long tradition of my so-called friends realizing they could get rid of me by starting a game of hide and seek and giving up on finding me. When I was in uni we used to play sardines in the bunkhouses on our trips away. 
Turns out after a few drinks a bunch of folks in their late teens and early twenties can really take a game too far, but one game really stood out point. That night we're dicking about in a leaky old bunkhouse somewhere up near Tisdale. Nearing the end stages of this game there were probably 25 or more of us crammed into a tiny 4 bed dorm room with only a couple people left searching. They seemed to be taking ages, which at this point was strange given most of the 25 odd people had to just stand in the room given there was so little space. So we wait and wait and wait, then the loudest scream I've ever heard. We all dart out of the room towards the scream to find the funniest thing I've ever seen. While searching, the last lad had fallen through the faking ceiling, apparently unable to find 25 people stood in a room. The last couple of people searching broke into the loft to see if we didn't up there. Apparently this chap had never broken into a loft before and didn't realize he had to step on the timbers. He took maybe three steps before he plummeting through the ceiling landing, slightly bemused, on a bed in the next room below. The poor lass who happened to be in the room was scared sheetless. It wasn't a small foot sized hole either as you might see in a cartoon. As the fella fell he took out an entire plaster board leaving a gaping 2 meters sized hole in the roof. Half the board was left swing limply held on only by the garish wallpaper we kind of all stood there in shock until my mate sauntered in and asked do you think we can blame it on the water damage? I don't think I stopped pissing myself for the next few hours we cleaned up in the morning, apologized to the owner, and to our surprise, were allowed back the following year, although the entrance to the loft had been thoroughly boarded shut. It's a pretty scaring memory actually point at the age of 7 or 8, we were attending a wedding and attending all the ceremonies, a traditional Indian wedding. Now all the younger kids decided to play hide and seek, mind you I was the youngest amongst them point, so it came down to hiding now, and this one as old cousin who was the eldest playing with us didn't let me hide with him, although there was plenty of space for both of us, and told me to go hide under the bed, pointing to the room which was decorated. I hesitated because it was the room for the newlywed couple. The game was very intense, felt like one at least back then. Left with no choice I went into the room and hid under the bed. My cousin had assured me he'd come get me when the game is done. Now I lost track of time and it's hot summer month and I'm sweating like crazy in a very decorated room with no one around until I hear multiple elders of the family accompanied with the couple enter the room point things happened pretty fast one. Everyone except the newly. Wed stayed back too, they locked the door from inside 3, I didn't know how to sneak out from under the bed 4, my cousin did not come to get me. Things went down pretty much bad from here. The couple didn't speak to each other for quite some time and all I could hear was the bride crying and trying not to be loud and be heard from outside. The dude was very rude to her did not even comfort her or say a word and I believe from under the bed he went to sleep and switched off the lights. The bride sat near the dressing table crying. I didn't really know what to do or what was happening. I was still expecting for my cousin to come, but that never happened. While my body was aching tremendously added the high moisture in the air, the burning temperature, and I was slightly hungry too. I barely slept. I kept looking at her mostly and slightly dozing off in between. Later in the morning at around 5 or 6 I hear the door being opened. I saw the bride. She went out. I was scared thinking about the consequences, if I should even go, if the groom was awake. I sneaked out and went out of the door which led to the washrooms. I went to the washroom and all this, while was thinking what must have happened in my absence to my parents. I was young to be thinking people cared, lol. As I got out I see her, the bride, still draped in the same exact sari looking like a mess which only I knew how that look had happened and all the relatives in the house, mostly the women kept on asking her how her special night went. She lead of course and just smiled at such questions my parents weren't even angry, they assumed I must have been around in the house full of people until date I haven't told this to anyone. Later I got to know it was an arranged marriage, though they have kids now. I can't really forget her crying all night long. My son who was 5 at the time, decided he was going to hide. My wife did not know she was seeking in this game. At first it's all a game as she wanders around our backyard calling his name. We are in suburb and have slightly under an acre lot. The kids know to stay in backyard. Checks under the deck, around trees etc. 
she starts panicking some and starts yelling his name and has our other children start searching for him 15 minutes go by and she starts that parental panic we all have felt. She has our oldest, 14, stay at the house while she goes around neighborhood looking for him. After about 5 to 10 minutes of looking she calls me in a full blown hysteric panic. I say go home and maybe the kids found him. Get a call in about 5 minutes and he's still not there. She's talking about calling police etc. I calm her down some, even though I'm starting to panic a little, and tell her I would call our township police as I knew quite a few of them as we live in a very small township. Call my boss first to make sure I can take a little break, to check on things out house. Call my friends and sheriff office and they send someone to help look for him. After I clocked out, and I'm heading home I get a call from my wife. She just said he's here. I'll call you back so how I heard the story went. My wife is out back where they were playing. She's bawling while screaming his name. So she sits down on deck and just starts sobbing uncontrollably. All of a sudden my son shows up beside her and says you don't have to cry mom. It's alright, I can't always find everyone either. I'm really good at it also of course the hug and feeling of murdering him came. Apparently he hid in a little hid a hole beside our neighbor's yard. This boy stayed, put for over a half hour through all of it. What kind of boy has that kind of patience at for? Sheriff had a good laugh as he showed up a few minutes later needless to say we set more ground rules, like we all have to agree to play hide and seek, and implementing our liali arcs and free to which anyone not found one, and would come out immediately. True story, on my 10th birthday I was playing hide and seek with some friends. I was celebrating in a cafe that was located in a small forest, a one hour drive away from any houses. We were playing until it turned dark that evening. It was my turn to hide and I did. Of course I got found at some point, but I didn't give up that easily. I ran away constantly looking back at where they were. I decided that it would be a good idea to run into the cafe on one side in and out on the other to trick my friends. They had these big windows in the cafe that you could pull open and go through. But because it was dark you could hardly tell if they were open or closed. So I tried to run out of the cafe and ran straight into the glass panel. It bursted and cut my hand, my leg and my belly. The injuries weren't that bad, but because of the massive amounts of blood no one could tell. My parents freaked out and then quickly rushed me to the hospital. I don't remember the drive because I apparently fainted in the car. In the hospital they had to remove skin from my belly and transplant it onto my hand to save my fingers. I got away lucky that time and only took away some scares, but that is a birthday I won't ever forget point p point s. A few years later I visited the place again and noticed that they put big glow in the night stickers on the windows to prevent this from happening again. Feels good to have done some good and maybe saved a life who knows. When I was 10 or so, I moved to a new house and was desperate to make friends. Conveniently, our next door neighbors had a kid in my grade. Naturally at 10, I thought we were destined to be best buds, but the other kid was on a different wavelength I guess. I went over to his house one day, welcomed warmly by his mother, who was excited for her son to make new friends. He suggested we play hide and seek, and I was so ready for this. I was going to hide so epically. He would have to give up and respect my skills and this would cement our friendship as I had proved I could be useful and crafty. I selected his mom's closet and secreted myself away behind some hanging dresses. I was golden and didn't think anything of it when he didn't show up for a while. I was so sure my hiding place was perfect. Eventually I must have fallen asleep because I was alerted by his mother's terrified scream at seeing an unexpected child curled up in her closet. Especially since to her, 5 hours had passed since I had come over and she assumed I had long gone home. The kid had chosen hide and seek so he could get rid of me and had been watching King of the Hill for hours. His mom made him give me his $10 cash allowance for the week in this almost ceremonial affair before I left to go home. As he handed it off, I was sure they could both detect the radioactive waves of burning shame pouring off me. I didn't know what else to do but take it. So I shoved it in a pocket and forgot about it for approximately 10 years. When I found it again, it was the last $10 I needed to buy an ounce of weed at the time. So thanks 
Kid hope your quarantine is going well, you wretched grunt sculpin. Playing hide and seek in the woods by our friends, house when it started to rain. The two dudes I was playing with booked it back to one of the dudes houses. I attempted to do the same, but got real turned around. Ended up walking for an unknown amount of time, until I stumbled across a dirt road. Luckily, a truck drove by, and saw a 10 ish year old boy walking on the road, soaking wet and crying. I was able to give a landmark to drive to, so I could get my bearings, then from there I gave the person directions to my house. This being the 90s, the person dropped me off without so much as are your parents home, or any other question. Well, they were not home. And I didn't have a key. And it was still raining. So, I broke the door handle to get inside, which worked. Fast forward a few hours later, and my dad gets home. He was not too pleased with me breaking the door handle, and decided the best plan of action was to spank the living sheet out of my cold, wet buns. I was dry by that point, but I'd like to think my buns were far from it. I'd also like to think I explained what had happened before the buns battering, but either my dad didn't register it, or I didn't get the chance, until after the glazing. He then apologized and called up my friend's house, and threatened my friend's mom, that he was going to drive over, and spank her kid's buns as badly as my little crescent rolls took a lick in for abandoning me in the goddamn woods. Wild day for sure. Yes. Finally I can answer one. I would stay with my cousins during the summers and we would need to find games to play. My cousin, girl, and I, boy, must have been 14 at time, while the two younger ones were probably 10, girl, and 8, boy. We decided to play sardines which is like reverse hide and seek, so basically one person hides, and when you find them, you hide with them until one person is left. The cousin that was my age decided to hide in the bathroom closet. I found her, and we both were hiding in there for a couple minutes, when we hear the 8 year yell out guys we need to time out I have to use the restroom. My cousin and I were then stuck as he proceeded to lock the door, and start to sit on the toilet. We were both in the closet holding out mouths shut, because we didn't want to get caught. It never crossed our minds, how traumatic it would be, if an 8 year was calming going potty and two people jumped out of the closet. Well after what felt like forever, and several toots I couldn't take it anymore, I fell out of the closet laughing, and ran out of the bathroom. The last thing I heard over my laughter was the shrieking of my 8 year cousin who thought he had some privacy in the restroom. He very quickly hiked up his pants, and ran for his mom. I don't think initially we understood the magnitude of what happened, because we thought it was hilarious, but after a couple minutes it hit us, that we should go make sure he was okay, and for the most part he was. We think he still checks closets, when he uses the bathroom, but one thing is for sure there is a no bathroom rule in the family hide and seek games now. This happened when I was 11 years old. A couple of friends and I were outside on a nice summer day. We chose someone to become it cause our version of hide and seek was combined with tag, where you gotta actually touch the person to be found. But anyways, I was looking for a good place to hide, and there was this one tree that was inclined to the point where you could walk on it, if you keep your balance. So I decided to hide on the tree when suddenly, I had discovered my fear of heights. I walked back down, thinking that she would find me anyways, and jumped off the tree. That's when I felt a sharp pain on the sole of my foot, and when I looked at it, there was a rusty nail that shouldn't be there. I quickly took my shoe off and grabbed a couple of leaves to put into my shoe, thinking it would stop the bleeding at least a little. I watched a lot of bear growls at the time. I was focused more on the game than my well-being and ignored the pain until we finished playing. That's when I went back home, and the moment I opened the door, I started crying. My mom who was confused, asked what happened. I just pointed at my foot and she saw the blood gushing out of my foot. She carried me to the bathroom to get me cleaned up and called my godfather to tell him that I need to go to the air. At that time, she couldn't drive and my dad was at work, so my godfather took us to the hospital. The doctors gave me some painkillers and wrapped my foot in gauze. That's how I ended up using crutches for the rest of that summer. Once when I went to my friend's birthday party, we all wanted to play hide and seek in the dark. Outside. 
Now I know, it sound like a bad idea, and I agreed, but I didn't wanna be a buzzkill. So when we decided to hide outside, I picked a pretty epic hiding spot. My friend's house had bushes. A lot of them. So I hid behind one, right on the corner of the sidewalk. We were not allowed to go out on the road, but I just hid behind a bush, not in the road, but by the road. Everything was going well, until some creep pulled up. I couldn't see the color of the truck, it was dark outside, but it was either black or gray. Anyway, he just pulled up on the opposite side of the road. I didn't think much, I just turned around, to see what the loud noise was. After about 3 or 4 round of hide and seek, the man got out of his car, and walked towards the house. I was confused and kinda scared. Some kid saw, but most didn't. As he walked up, he grabbed my arm and pulled it, since I was the closest to the street. Now, the bushes were bigger than me, when I hunched over to hide, so nobody saw it all. That's when I jumped up, and ran right towards the door to the house. All my friends looked up, and saw me running, and saw the man. They all just started, as the man got closer, the girls, and one boy, ran into the house, except one girl. You all know that girl who thinks she is the best person, and is the main character in everything in her mind. Well, she was standing outside, and waiting for him to get closer. I remember my other closer friend running out to grab her, and pull her inside, but she went straight back inside, when she saw the man's face. The man grabbed the girl's back, and picked her up. She screamed. Basically he dropped her, and just awkwardly went back to his car. So yay, that's it. We decided to always play hide and seek either at someone else's house outside, or at her house inside. Point also r slash let's not meet again creepy old man, let's not meet ever again. So I grew up extremely poor. My family was considered the pariah of the neighborhood. Many of the local kids were not allowed to play with us. The one group of kids that could were the other horrible family. They had three kids. Both parents had drug problems, so needles to say their house was a shambles. We all skipped school one day. I was 10. My brother 14 and my sister 12. Those kids were similar, and in age, so we played together. Anyway hide and seek seemed like something to do at their house. We finally started playing in the basement. Now their house was just about falling apart. The basement was filled with junk. Think hoarders. There was no electricity, so absolutely a gold mine of fun to us kids. My brother started his counting, and off we ran. Rules were we had to stay in the dark, musty basement. I was tiny, I'm 5 feet 2 now, and 125 lbs. I was maybe 90 pounds then, anyway I found what seemed like a wooden box. Perfect. I climbed inside, and closed the top. I waited and heard my brother finding people, I was winning. I never won. I felt something in my hair, crawling. I pulled at it. Then on my back, then my legs, everywhere. But I was winning. I refused to give in. Finally I think it is over, and I might have won. I'm waiting for the call. Carl, one of the boys that live there, yelled hey where are you? I had won. They start yelling for me. I rise up to jump out of my box. I can't get the top open, it must have latched. Finally my brother finds me banging on the box. He opens the lid and shins a light into my little coffin. Turns out I was in a chest filled with roaches. We spent about half an hour pulling roaches out of my clothes and hair. My long brown hair, eek. This didn't go horribly wrong, but it's funny to us. We used to play at our old high school at night, when the lights went out. Except the finders had bicycles, because it was a large campus. So hiders would just be sneaking all over the campus until getting chased down. We just agreed that, if the biker got within distance that was clear enough, that you couldn't escape, you were caught. So one night we are playing, maybe 1am, and I'm on a bike with my buddy. We are riding around the backside of the gym near the tennis courts. We see what we think, is a car coming on campus but again, it was dark. Minutes later by buddy and I are sitting in what is essentially the courtyard trying to think where they are when two people come up behind us yelling with flashlights and guns pointed at us to get off the bikes and down on the ground. We didn't do anything wrong, so we complied realizing it was a car, a police car. Once handcuffed we told them what we were doing, and they were cool. But we had to yell for our other two friends, buddy's brother and his friend who are both younger. 
My buddy's brother comes out fairly quickly and complies with the cops. The friend on the other hand. We yell for him for about 5 minutes, and when he finally comes out he thinks we're messing with him and is still in hide and seek mode the 250 LB6 FT7 in tall come, walks toward him as the friend essentially starts playing tag I've never seen feet move so quickly to try and dodge someone. He was in that feet wide, knees bent, skating left and right to find a direction stance. We yelled it's a cop, but he continued to think it was us being dicks or something. He wasn't out running this beast of a cop though. The cop grabs him, tucks him under his arm and walks him over to us. He's lucky he didn't get taste. Luckily we were able to explain to the cop what we were doing and complied with him. He ended up taking the cuffs off explaining someone set off a silent alarm through a window. Bullshit because we played countless times that late and just said go home. Yeah yeah, not exciting but we thought it was funny. Honestly, this first story is pretty vanilla point we were playing SWAT, outside hind and seek tag, with a mix of my and my older brother's friends, so it was a mix of kids going into middle school, and young high schoolers. We were having a hard time finding one of the last players on the block, so my friends and I decided that the only place he could be was at the haunted house, none of my friends wanted to go with me to check the side, so they stood on the street as I went to scope out the place. Well, of course this high schooler was hiding there, but he decided to jump out and try scaring us. My friends immediately booked it, and I'm standing there by myself, scared out of my mind, thinking I'm about to be murdered. The guy instantly regretted his decision and said he wouldn't have done it if he had known I was alone, but it was too late. I started crying point my dad, hearing me cry, shuts the game down for everyone, which pisses off my brother, which then makes me feel terrible cause I felt I ruined everyone's night point this one didn't happen to me point I went to an artsy boarding school in the middle of the woods where the kids basically had free reign to do whatever. Within reason. This was during Halloween, so the campus had a few different student run events going on, a dance, a costume contest, a haunted house, and full on campus hide and seek tag feet. Slenderman. The last one was technically unofficial and set up without any teacher or advisor supervision. Basically, no one was there to tell these kids, hey, maybe stay clear of the sculpture garden, especially at night, of course, one of these kids goes sprinting through the dark in the sculpture garden and skewers herself with a metal rod. Don't worry she didn't hit anything vital, the rod just went straight through her knee point I wasn't actually participating in the tag, but I remember standing outside the party and seeing a group of panicked kids carrying this girl to the infirmary point when I heard what happened and to who, I thought, ha, huh, serves her right. Cause this girl had been a huge bully, especially to me. Looking back now, I realize that she was a sports head and rode horses competitively and this probably ruined her riding career. Then again, she did get expelled a couple months later for continuing to bullying other students. TLDR version, paid attention to friend chasing me, fell off 20 foot cliff, almost died, brain surgery, military ambitions terminated point full story, always wanted to join the military my entire life, as it's the family business. I was playing Manhunt, a more team based hide and seek, in a forest near my high school in 11th grade with a bunch of friends from cross country and JROTC. As a suburban, I wasn't expecting jagged terrain and nova, so I made the mistake of running while looking at the person chasing me, instead of where I was going. Ended up falling 20 feet off a cliff onto my head, landing in a little shallow rocky stream, blood oozing from my skull couldn't move anything below the neck, and I was incredibly confused, my equilibrium faked. Apparently when I was unconscious my friends found me seizing face down in the river, and so they turned me over, and tried to keep me alive best they could, telling me not to move my neck, keep talking etc. The paramedics came first, but they were not able, nor equipped to recover me from the bottom of this forest valley. So firefighters were called in, as I was fading they gave me pain meds, I knocked out, and I was airlifted from my local hospital to a facility in Fairfax with brain surgeons. Woke up 3 days later, I survived and I'm okay for the most part. The worst thing, other than my skull, that got shattered were my dreams, as I suffered an epidural hematoma, where your skull cavity fills up with blood slash brain fluid and drowns itself, 
which is one of the things that they permanently prohibit candidates from service at military physical exams, sent in a waiver from my neurosurgeon clearing me fit for duty, and I played a whole season of lacrosse after my accident, but it didn't matter. While I'm physically recovered, my mental slash psychological health has deteriorated due to the trauma to the brain and depression stemming from an unfulfilled mission and the ensuing existential crisis that followed. That was by far the worst game of hide and go seek I've ever been in, and I'm sure for some of my other friends who were traumatized by seeing me almost die, it was probably the worst for them too. As a side note, any child's game that lands you in the hospital on morphine and with a catheter in your dick is probably a good example for worst times ever. I also still have back and neck problems, but I'm lucky because I know it could have been worse. Not as bad as some of these other stories, but still memorable for me point my friend had one of those old TVs in his attic that probably weighed 800 pounds. If it didn't weigh that much, it sure seemed like it to a 7 year old. I'm talking about a TV that was deeper than it was wide and had wood paneling all around it. This thing was a solid 40 inch screen, which was massive at the time point anyways. We were playing hide and seek, and I decided it was the perfect idea to crawl between this TV and the wall in a tiny crevice. It was all going great until my friend came up to the attic looking for me. He realized I was back there, and somehow in the midst of my discovery and the ensuing madness, the weight of the TV got pushed back onto me as I was standing up. I found myself completely pinned between this TV and the wall, unable to move at all. I'm claustrophobic, and I immediately began panicking. I was crying, screaming, and begging for help. But what did my friend do? Naturally, he calmly went downstairs. Told his parents I went home and acted as if nothing happened. He was afraid of getting in trouble, so he decided that leaving me up there to be crushed by a TV was the best alternative. Unreal. Finally after an hour or two his older brother heard me screaming and got his parents up there to help me get free. I was pissed 18 years later. We are still great friends and laugh about it to this day. Point TLDR hid behind a giant old TV, got pinned by the TV and couldn't move, and my friend decided he didn't want to get in trouble so, rather than getting help he left me there to get crushed. Luckily his brother found me, and we still laugh about it to this day. It wasn't exactly hide and seek, but we used to at a game we called manhunt. It worked the same as hide and seek, except there was no base. When the seeker found you and tagged you, you had to join the seeker team. As the game progressed eventually you had 10 plus seekers looking for one person on the run. We used the whole neighborhood for this game. We were all in our teenish years, 11 to 17. One night we were playing, and one of the kids with cerebral palsy, her wasn't very good for obvious reasons. He couldn't outrun anyone, and find a new hiding place like most of us did. He decided to climb a tree. He actually managed to stay hidden there for about 20 minutes. So they find him, and one of the 4 or 5 seekers decides to climb up the tree after him. So the kid with CP climbs higher up the tree. So a bunch of people including myself are at the bottom of the tree. Seekers and hiders now have joined at the bottom in what is the most tentative alliance ever to be seen amongst teen. Those of us that are seekers are standing wearily nearby chanting on our buddy in the tree. The seekers all standing around trying g to convince our friend Mike to come down because he has nowhere to go. The occasional seeker racing after one of the hiders hoping to get the jump on him slash her so now our friend is desperate to win for our team. He knows he has to get out of this and can't sit in the tree the whole night. So with zero warning the kid with cerebral palsy decides to Tarzan leap to the neighboring tree like somehow that's his way out. Like the seekers won't walk 8 feet over to the next tree point anyway, I'm sure you can tell where this goes. He clearly did not make the leap. From about 40 to 50 feet in the air he hit damn near every branch on his way down, possibly including branches from the other tree. I've never seen so much as a cut and video of somebody hitting so many branches on the way down point of course the moment he lands the most important thing was for a seeker to tag him. Then we checked to make sure he was still alive. He was but it was like 6 months before her played manhunt again. I have two stories. First was when I was about 10 or 11, and I lived in Florida. I climbed to the top of a huge rock, 
taller than me, and I was probably close to 5 feet, that was kind of hidden in a jungle in my backyard. It was a great hiding place, because no one could find me. Then I realized I couldn't get down from the rock. I was wearing shorts, and the climb was pretty close to vertical. Eventually I started screaming for help so someone would find me and get me down. I think I eventually had to slide down, and my legs got all scratched up. My other story is about a game of sardines. One person hides and everyone seeks. When you find the hiding spot you hide too. The last person to find everyone loses. I was playing with my cousins. Two people were hiding, the original hider, and one person who found them. There were two more of us who searched and searched, but couldn't find them. Finally we asked my aunt for help. After about 45 minutes the adults were starting to get worried. We couldn't find them anywhere inside or outside, which was supposed to be off limits. So, my aunt started yelling all over the house for them to come out. She made it clear that the game was over and it wasn't funny anymore. It still took a while before they came out of hiding. One cousin wanted to come out right away, but the other said no because they didn't want to lose. My aunt was really mad and they got in big trouble. I was 11 at the time and I had a cousin who I would always play hide and seek tag with. We'll call this cousin John. John was a year younger than me but more energetic and a bit of a daredevil. So me and John were playing hide and seek around my grandparents house who had a fully landscaped garden with bricks laid out by the plants, several varieties of flowers. How our games go is typically one of us counts to 10, the hider hides, and the seeker seeks, but if the seeker finds the hider, the seeker still has to catch the hider. So we have a couple of games and everything goes by smoothly, we were kids, and we were bored, so it's not like there was much else to do point, when it's my turn. To become the seeker I have no troubles finding John, because he never takes the hiding part as seriously as the chase. So I spend what seems like 10 minutes chasing him around the garden, and I corner him by the front door of the house. It all happened so fast, but before I could catch him, he attempted to park her from the railing to the garden below us. Six foot drop, he climbed on top of the railing, slipped and fell head first into the bricks directly below him. Point the brick he fell on had cracked his skull and sheared a portion of his hair clean off. I remember it sort of still hanging from his head and blood pooling down his head. I yelled and cried for the adults to come, and his mother was livid. He was rushed to the hospital and made a full recovery. I had to report to the police exactly what happened, but I felt pretty responsible for that whole endeavor for quite some time played once with a babysitter and my older sister when I was younger. At that age I was kind of lanky but pretty flexible, so I could squeeze into a lot of tight slash small spaces. I had a step ladder up to the wash machine, so I could help my mom with laundry, and I saw a giant empty tight box on our dryer, so I curled up inside the tight box. I genuinely don't remember how old I was at the time, but I was younger than 6. Since it was the babysitter I had before my parents were moved to another base, I somehow contorted myself so the lid was propped up a little, and I could get air. I don't know how long I was in that tight box, but after a while I heard my sister and babysitter screaming likely frantically and crying. They never came in the laundry room and I realized I was stuck in the box, so I had to yell out for them. It must have taken another 10 minutes or so for them to follow my voice. They got in the laundry room and were looking all around while my unhelpful as was like I'm here, I'm here, you know, not specific. Finally the babysitter realized where I was calling from and pulled the tide box to the floor and managed to pull me out of it. No idea how I managed that, but even 20 plus years later my sister will occasionally ask, remember that time you hid in the tide box? How the hell did you even manage that? For the record, that babysitter sure put up with a lot of dumb sheet from me. Point later on in Ohio I would also wander into the woods on a babysitter and send her into a panic. I get why my mom had trouble finding a babysitter now. We played H and S, usually on teams. Depending on how many people played, was how big of an area was open. Point I remember one game, I think there were only 4 or 5 of us. So we played the lower block road slash whatever, which consisted of about 7 or 8 properties else's, could not go indoors, but anywhere else was fair game. There was a giant rock in one neighbor's yard that you could crouch behind to hide. 
I was it, and was looking for people. As I head towards this rock looking for people, my neighbor jumps up and out from behind, and starts to full sprint screaming his head off. While running he is pulling his shirt off, shoes, socks, pants, bruce, everything by the time he gets to his yard he is buck naked, and hollering as he run up the porch in his house. Left a trail close to the door. I could still hear him from the road. By now, more than just me is aware. What the fuck was that? Well come to find out, that rock had home to a giant fire ant mount, 95% of it was underground, but it encompassed the entire area, not just under the rock, but about a foot larger. So while he was crouched, hugging the backside, from my view, of this rock, he was being invaded by a swarm of fire ants. When we found out exactly what happened, damn. He tore up. They had to get a professional to dig and kill the whole colony. Our games were epic. Sometimes they took place night, night tag, sometimes they were 2 to 3 blocks in size. When I was young, probably about 2, my parents were having a birthday party for my brother who was 4 at the time. With everything going on with family and friends, I wanted attention from my mom, but she was trying to tend to things for the party point so, she said, let's play hide and seek, to which I happily agreed as a 2 year old would do. So I went on my merry way to find a hiding spot. Time continued on for god knows how long, and it seemed I picked a really great hiding spot for two years old. My mom on the other hand forgot all about the game as something at the party distracted her. Two hours later, she thought I was hanging out with family or my brother, but nope, I was conked out asleep in the bushes outside, those really thick bushes that are hard to see through. My mom came looking for me once she realized I was missing. Yelling and screaming for me, she couldn't find me, and I couldn't hear her, because I was sleeping like a baby in the bushes. She got really scared and called the police. They came over, and looked around for about 20 minutes into I finally woke up, and came out of the bushes, only to see the police at my house. For a 2 year old me, I was happy, my mom was relieved and crying, and the police were happy, and showing me the inside of their police vehicle, looks like I won the game that day. When I was young, probably about 2, my parents were having a birthday party for my brother who was 4 at the time. With everything going on with family and friends, I wanted attention from my mom, but she was trying to tend to things for the party point so, she said, let's play hide and seek, to which I happily agreed as a 2 year old would do. So I went on my merry way, to find a hiding spot. Time continued on for god knows how long and it seemed I picked a really great hiding spot for 2 years old. My mom on the other hand forgot all about the game as something at the party distracted her. 2 hours later, she thought I was hanging out with family or my brother, but nope, I was conked out asleep in the bushes outside, those really thick bushes that are hard to see through. My mom came looking for me once she realized I was missing. Yelling and screaming for me, she couldn't find me, and I couldn't hear her, because I was sleeping like a baby in the bushes. She got really scared and called the police. They came over, and looked around for about 20 minutes into I finally woke up, and came out of the bushes, only to see the police at my house. For a 2 year old me, I was happy, my mom was relieved and crying, and the police were happy, and showing me the inside of their police vehicle, looks like I won the game that day. One time me and my 7 other friends decided to play hide and seek around our neighborhood. On the first round I was struggling on where to hide, but then I saw an open garage, and so with minimal time left I hid behind some boxes in the garage. Around 2 minutes later, my crush walks in the garage with one of her friends. It was her house. I guess they saw me earlier with my friends, because I sat there for 10 minutes listening to my crush and her friend call me dumb and stupid. It broke my young heart. I couldn't get out, because if they saw me, they would tell the whole school I was a pervert. While they were talking, my crush said oh yeah I remember what we came in here for, and close the garage. That's when I thought my life was over. I had to sit there in complete silence, and I was crying on the inside. I couldn't budge and it was very uncomfortable. After 30 minutes her mom comes in, sees me and I guess parents know literally everything because she says, don't worry. I did stupid things as a kid too, and opens the garage. I run for it, and when I get back to my friends, how's they are all sitting there, laughing their ass off. 
One of them saw me run in there and saw the garage close. He then told everyone, and they all sat there for 40 minutes laughing and wondering what was happening inside. I guess she never found out, and we all said that we never tell her. It was the saddest 40 minutes of my life. TLDR. I listened to my crush call me stupid for 10 minutes, and then I got locked in her house. Back when I was in a camping group in Florida, I would play manant with a bunch of the other campers. Once the parents, mostly dads, would kick back with some beers and draw stinky albacer over the fire, we would get really rowdy point there was this one time where we were playing and hiding around the campsite and near the river that the campsite was located around. A couple kids who were hiding took it upon themselves to hide under one of those park style tables, the ones where there are two benches on each side that are connected with metal bars. Well, once they were spotted, both kids immediately tried to wiggle from out of under the bench. One kid jolted upward and hit his head so hard on the underside of the table, he nearly knocked himself out and started bleeding after his head slammed against the concrete. The other kid managed to escape from the table in time and was running as fast as he could towards the road that went around the park. Next thing we knew, he ran into a pedestrian crossing sign, edge side first, and split his forehead open. Fortunately, my dad and another dad were ex-military and had some training with first aid. My dad stitched up the one kid's forehead and the other dad disinfected the wound for the other kid. The kid that slammed his head against the concrete had a concussion and had to get an ambulance ride over to the hospital and the other kids took it like a champ point we were no longer allowed to play manhunt. I was playing hide and seek against my paranoid grandparents while they were watching me for a week so my single dad could get a much deserved break. I was like 7 point spoiler alert, grandparents didn't know they were playing hide and seek. I was doing a very very good job of switching my location to somewhere they'd already checked when they left the room. Moving silently through the house, like I was auditioning for the role of solid snake. I hid all over the house. So proud of myself and how I was able to outwit them. Then they went to another room for a few minutes and stopped looking. I took this opportunity to throw them off the scent by unlocking and leaving the front door open then returning to my favorite hiding place. The attic that neither of them could get into anymore. But you could hear almost anything going on in the room below you if you lifted the insulation below you 20 minutes later. Police sirens. They start searching the house. Nothing point they talk. Grandparents are crying. Now I'm thinking oh god I'm going to go to jail if I come out of hiding while the police are here. So I stay and wait. So does one of the police officers. The other two. I think. Leave point I spent another 3 hours up there before the officer left. re i i i as my dad showed up. From out of state. Cancelled his hunting trip that he'd been saving up for all year. That he'd already spent the money on. That he'd been talking about excitedly for months so that's when I left the attic and got grounded from anything that wasn't educational for a year. No TV. No music. No video games. No seeing friends. No phone calls. Just reading. And homework. And chores. For a year. And I faking deserved it. Damn. I remember so much fun times with this, but we had one incident that stopped the game for a couple of months a bit of backstory. In South Africa we played hide and seek in the street and the entire neighborhood was fair game. I'm sure our rules differed from the rest of the world, but in order to win the game there was a designated start point, and in order for you to be caught the seeker has to reach that point, and say you caught with saying your name. So we tend to try and get the seeker away from this zone, and beat him on speed or stealth. You can win by reaching that zone before the seeker and shout safe. So, your hiding spot was determined by how fast the seeker was compared to you, and we had three streets about four kilometers in length we would use points so, one evening we decided to play the game and the seeker was a pretty slow kid, so we knew the further he was from reaching the court zone the better our chance of beating him, and we decided to hide in the street behind the street we lived and posted a lookout to kind of observe his movement. After a few minutes of him searching his vicinity he saw the lookout and came towards our direction. That's when we decided to jump over a fence and hide. Normally neighbors in the area allow kids to do this as it was a common game kids played and they would sometimes offer to assist us as lookouts. 
But, we didn't know the guy whose wall we jumped over, and I remember him peeking through his window, and shouting you duckers. And we immediately jumped back over the wall, and started making our way to the street that links the two streets. And when we looked back all I remember, was seeing a shiny object in the guy's hand, and he was running up to us from behind. We started running, and that's when we started hearing the gunshots. This guy whose wall we jumped over was now chasing and shooting at us as we made a run for it. I noticed a few red streaks pass by really close, but my legs just kept running. All five of us come running around the corner and we see the seeker who asked us what's going on, and we shouted at him to run. I proceeded to grab him by his t-shirt and pull him along as he was too slow. We made it into the closest friend's house, and his father asked us, what did we do? We told him there was a guy chasing us, and we hid away in his house. Then there was a knock on the door, and we heard a guy demand to see the kids that was there, and my friend's father proceeded to tell him we were good kids and we were playing in the street. To which point we heard him tell my friend's father that he got home an hour ago, and he said kids broke into his house and stole some valuables. His neighbor saw the kids do this and told him. A few minutes later the neighbor who told him about the kids who broke in also came around, and he wanted to see us to which we all came down the stairs with some kids crying, and he confirmed that it wasn't us, we were too young to have done it. The guy ended up apologizing to us, but we were all cheating ourselves knowing that we could have died that night. Fun times. I was very very young. Like three quarters or something like that. My big brother who's like 3 years older than me had a friend over, and I really wanted to play hide and seek with my big brother and his cool friend. What little sister wouldn't? My brother said yes, and told me to go hide. You see, I was a small girl, so I could fit anywhere, so I decided to hide in these small, deep, square shaped closets all the way down at the floor my mom had in her room. I just fit in there with not much space left, and thought I was a genius, because there was no way he would find me. A little time goes by, and I realize pretty fast, that this is very uncomfortable, and I'm very scared of the dark. This isn't fun. So I start calling out, to maybe give my spot away, more time passes and nothing happens. I can't even hear anything. I start to panic, then I try to open the little door. Doesn't open. I try again. Nothing. I'm a three or something year old little girl. Strength is not on my side. I realize that this thing can't be opened from the inside and no one knows I'm here. So I just break down and scream bloody murder. I cry and scream and cry and scream. Suddenly the door opens and I'm gently pulled out by my very worried mom. Point turns out my brother and his friend had just told me to go hide and then they went to play games for like an hour or something. My god the sheet storm he got from my mom, and that gave way to my not exactly crippling, but very much their claustrophobia. It pops up every now and then to make me want to claw, or punch my way out of wherever I am, but it could be worse. Yeah. Or it's my time to finally shine point. So it was a late night, school night to be correct. My buddies and I just hanging around at my house nothing to do. My genius self was like... Hey, let's play man and in the middle of the night. Basically hide and seek with just a fancier term. So I called all of my other friends that live 10 minutes away. And in total, we had about 12 people at my house to play manhunt. We split up in teams of 2, and one team would have to search the remaining 5 teams. Rulers, you can hide anywhere on my street in my street only. And if one teammate gets caught, then your team has to be at the next round. And also, you must move every minute, and can't just camp at one location. So one round goes by, super fun and intense as this was taken place in the middle of the night. And also we had to be extra quiet, so we don't wake up the neighbors. So I was hiding with my buddy behind a bush, saw one of the finders close by, so I ran fast, sonic fast. Ran around a house, trying to blend in near a bush, he was getting close. So I dashed for it, and ran behind my neighbor's house point this is where I faked up. So there was like some stairs leading down to his backyard from the driveway. And I caught a glimpse of that, and did a leap of faith. And when I landed, boom. Smacked the fuck out of my lips on the armrest of a lawn chair. My bottom tooth had pierced the top of my lips. My tooth was chipped, and my lips were cut wide opened. 
I was in total shock as this was my first accident and had to cancel the whole game which lasted shorter than my expectations in bed. Buddies had to calm me down and clean the cut with some rubbing alcohol. Did not visit the ER uh, since I couldn't afford it. I really needed stitches and the cut was pretty big. Went to school the next day and had a swollen lip and cut was still open. Put some band-aid on it and called it a day one month went by and it healed, but now I have a major scar on my lip from it not being healed corrected. When I was 4 I used to live in a trailer park basically in the middle of nowhere. The nearest town was 6 to 7 miles away. My only friends growing up during this time were a group of neighborhood boys ages ranging 7 to 15, and we'd play hide and seek together all the time. Our only neighbors outside of the park was a peacock farmer, a dairy farm, and a vineyard, and we had a really bad coyote situation happening. One time during hide and seek, my friend, who we'll call Robert, and I decided we were going to slip beneath the fence that separated the peacock farm from the trailer park and hide in the tall grass so no one could find us. We heard our seeker taunting us, so we moved farther away from the fence and more into the pea farmer's yard. Horrible idea. We heard the back door to his house open and the farmer came out with his shotgun in hand and said, You have 6 seconds to get the fuck out to my yard, or I'm gonna shoot. Being 4 I didn't understand what the hell was going on, and I didn't understand trespassing, but Robert who was 12 at the time, decided he wasn't going to move, and sat as still as a statue, I think it was out of fear or shock, but the farmer got to 2 and Robert took off without me, and left me in the grass alone, and I started crying. The farmer saw him take off, and walked right to where I was sitting, picked me up, dusted me off, and escorted me back to the park. He ended up being a really nice guy and none of us really got into trouble because the farmer had to deal with trailer park kids in his yard all the time. The only reason he brought his gun was because 1. The coyote situation and 2. Crazy meth heads who try to steal his eggs and sell them point tldr. Neighborhood boy and I snuck into a peacock farmer's yard to hide and almost got shot. When I was in first or second grade, about 6 or 7 years old, I would play the worst game of hide and seek I can remember. It was late, and we were all supposed to be getting ready for bed. While our mom dealt with putting down the baby, the other three of us would regularly use that time to play and be rambunctious instead of getting ready for bed slash school the next day. We didn't really have a bedtime, but we had to be in our rooms at a specific time as not to wake up the baby. My brother, the eldest, always counted first. And I, the second eldest, was almost never found in all of our games throughout childhood. Even after this, I would eventually play again lol. I was very small and very flexible, so I could hide in cabinets and crawl spaces really anywhere you wouldn't think a child would be able to hide comfortably for a long period of time. We had a dresser slash desk in my sister and I's room. It was very old, ugly and wooden. On the bottom of the desk there were three rows of drawers, and on the top was a compartment. When you opened the top compartment, you had the pull down on the handle, and when the door was pulled down slash out it would lock at the bottom, to create a desk from the compartment. I'm pretty sure that type of furniture is called a secretary's desk. If you google that, those are the images most similar to the object I'm describing. We kept things in the drawers, but regularly used the desk to color on and such, so there were only pieces of paper in the compartment. Aha. The perfect place for me to hide. To my dismay, once I was in the desk I realized I could not shut the door from the inside. It was hinged to the piece of wood underneath me, and the handle was on the outside. But wait. My brother was nearly done counting, and our house is not large. The door to my room is loud, and he knows I have not left. I didn't want to lose right off the bat. I put my tiny child fingers in the crack between the door and the dresser. I thought I could surely push the door up enough to where it would eventually snap shut from the pressure. It definitely tried. But my fingers were obviously still in the crack, and although I moved them as quickly as I could as the crack got smaller from the desk being closed, the hinges were in the way. And that is the story of how I almost sliced off the top of my middle finger in elementary school. So my sisters, cousins and I were playing hide and seek at my uncle's house a couple of years ago. We were all between the ages of 4 and 10, my youngest sister was 4, and I was 10. 
we mainly played upstairs as the adults were downstairs doing something that was too boring for us to pay attention to. The only rules was we couldn't hide in this one wooden box that was tucked in the corner of one of the closets, and we had to stay upstairs. So the first few rounds go by as usual, nothing of note happens. But then my cousin whose house this was, was the one seeking. I hide myself under a bed, and left my two sisters, 4 and 7 years old respectively, to find this spot. Not even 30 seconds, after I'm in position, I hear a series of loud bangs, like something smacking against sheet metal, then crying. I try to get out from under the bed so fast I smash my head into the frame so hard I starts to bleed, but I don't care. I run into the room I think I hear the crying from, and see one of my sisters kneeling next to the box in the corner of the closest. Turns out that box was the laundry chute, and led directly to the basement, where the washer and dryer were. Turns out my one sister told my youngest sister to hide in the box for some reason, and being for she listened to her. I look down the chute and I can't see anything but I can hear my sister crying. So I go running down the stairs, and see the adults all panicking as they run into the basement. By so miracle, my sister escaped with only a sprained ankle and a couple of bruises. It was only when my father went to rub my head, and tell me she was fine, that we also discovered the nasty cut on the back of my head. So we went to the ER, just to be safe and my sister got an air cast, and I got some weird medical glue for my head, it was either that or stitches. For the next year, my entire family was basically banned from playing hide and seek in that house, and to this day, my family won't let my sister forget the one time she dropped my other sister down a laundry chute. Oh yay. One of the many ways I've almost died. TLDR at the bottom point I was around 8 to 9 at the time. I was playing hide and seek at my grandma's house with my cousins. My grandma's house is a two story home with a large basement. My sister started counting on the main floor and everyone split up to hide. Most of the other cousins ran to the basement. I ran up into the second floor by myself, and slid the door shut behind me to make it look like no one had gone up their point I then crept into what used to be my aunt's room and shut that door over as well. In this room there was a cedar chest that was usually full of barbers and stuff. I quickly hid all the barbers behind the chest so no one would see them, and utilized my lanky stature to climb into the box and shut the lid point, so I'm in the chest, folded like a tiny child pretzel. I can hear footsteps and stuff in other parts of the second floor, and chuckle to myself knowing no one would find me here. I laid silently for a bit, hoping to win the match, but slowly the air in the chest grew heavier I realize I really can't breathe, and push at the lid to open the chest. But the lid wouldn't open. I was freaked out, and started to panic, thinking my sister was sitting on the lid. I began banging on the lid and screaming at her to get off because I couldn't breathe point screaming, made the air hotter though. I got lithated and everything went fuzzy. Then I heard footsteps coming towards the chest and the lid finally opened and I look up to see my sister's face. I crawled out gasping and screeching at her for sitting on me and nearly suffocating me to death point and she looks at me and says. I wasn't even in the room. I didn't know you were in the box, until you started screaming, while I was sitting there I realized, when I had climbed into the chest and shut the lid, the flip down latch had closed. No one had sat on the chest, I had locked myself in it. I don't do well with small spaces anymore. TLDR, accidentally locked myself in a cedar chest and almost suffocated. When I was really young I went to my mom's friend's house for a gathering of some sort. There were some kids there that were all older than me, and we played hide and seek at the golf club behind my mom's friend's house. Me being a little boy decided that I should go 10 houses down and hide in a bush. After 2 hours of waiting I decided that the hide and seek might have been over. So I tried to go back to the house. The thing is that I had no idea what their house looked like because all the houses were the same in that area. I cried and was yelling for my mom for half an hour and finally a runner found me. He helped me look, and after an hour of walking up and down the area of my mom and some kids finally came out to find me, I didn't get in any trouble, and we left immediately. Probably because the thing was over another time I was at a farm, to celebrate a baby they had just been born. There are these kids, that I didn't know, that we are exploring some woods. We decide to play hide and seek and I went near a little creek. 
two other kids that were also hiding came by and found me and told me to jump the creeks so that they could go into the pasture with all the bulls. I decided it would be kind of fun, but I was such a good boy that I didn't go over there. When the game was over we came out of the woods and I saw my mom yelling at some kid who looks sort of like me. When I came up behind her she got mad at me saying that I had gone into the area with them, I didn't. We also left then shortly after because the party was getting semi empty point edit. I'm doing this on mobile and I'm using a voice type. Just so you know. When I was in 6th grade, I was playing H and S slash tag at a friend's house and decided to climb up on their cinder block wall that had protruding iron spikes down the center of the top of the wall. I was able to place my feet on either side of the spikes to stand up on the wall. One of my friends was strategizing with me about where to hide, and as we were talking, my other friend who was it started walking in our direction. So my friend said he's coming, and took off running. I panicked and tried to make my way across the top of the wall to get onto the roof of his house. I missed my step and fell off the wall onto the other side of his property, about a 7 foot drop, and quickly got up as I was still focused on the game. I looked down at my leg and noticed I had torn a hole in my school uniform pants and started freaking about how my mom would react about tearing my school pants lol. I looked at my leg through the tear and noticed a few scratches but didn't think anything of it. So I started to walk to go back around the wall and get back into the game and felt a sharp pain in my leg. I looked through the tear in the pants again and lifted the pants a little to notice a 2 inch gash and a giant piece of orange fat looked like seasoned raw chicken lol hanging from the gash. Apparently as I fell off the wall one of the iron spikes pierced my thigh but it all happened so quickly that I didn't feel it. I didn't know what else to do besides push the meat back into my leg and wrap it up with my sweater. My friends helped me limp back home and my uncle had to call my mom so she could leave work to take me to the hospital. She was way more upset about me injuring myself than me tearing my uniform pants side note when I got to the hospital. I remember the doctor just squirting an aesthetic into the open gash and then basically fingering my wound to see how deep it was lol. Okay, so, when I was a kid I loved Dora the Explorer, and one day I asked my mom to draw me a map to my grandma's place, and she did her best. She drew a rough map of it, and I was very happy with it. My brother was sick, so I had nobody to play with, so my mother told me we could play hide and seek. I agreed immediately, and she said she would come search for me after she checked on my brother. So I, wanting to be an explorer just like Dora took my map, and went outside left our house without telling my mom. Keep in mind I was 5 at the time and I remember a bit from this and the rest, my mother told me about, and so I wandered the streets of our, unsafe, town at 10 to 11 pm. My grandma's house would take hours to reach on foot, and especially for a child, and so I actually ventured quite far, until I reached a crossroad. I was really mad because my mom didn't mention which way I should be going to reach granny's house, I was supposed to go right. And so I decided to go back home to tell my mom her map wasn't good. And then two strangers on a motorbike stopped next to me. And now we reach a part my mom and I have been fighting over four years now. My mom claims those men brought me back home, they are apparently the sons of a family friend. However I'm certain I went back home alone. I know I'm certain, because those two scared me telling me there was a monster up ahead, and I remember me getting almost lost on the way back, because the map wasn't good enough, do a better job, mom. And when I returned home my mom had gone nuts, because she was worried sick. She then asked me, if a man on a motorbike brought me back home. I said no. She said the man called him, and told her he brought me back home safe. He did not, and I'm certain of it. I'm 18 now, and I'm still sure the man didn't bring me back home I legit ran away from him, because he and his brother scared me. Besides I would remember riding with him, because it was my dream, to ride one as a kid. I hated Dora the Explorer afterwards, and my mom never played hide and seek with me ever again point the end. So once when I was young, I was playing hide and seek with my parents. I had the genius idea to hide under the bathroom sink in the cabinet. 
unlocked the bathroom door, and took one of the magnetic keys from the mirror, where my parents thought I couldn't reach, but I was like faking Spider-Man. The cabinet had a magnetic lock, and would auto-lock once closed, I unlocked it, and I hid the key in the medicine cabinet. Also magnetically locked, by the way can I point out how stupid magnetic locks are? They suck and are easy to get into. Back to the story. After the key was locked away I climbed inside, and closed the cabinet door. After a while I decided I gave up, because it was cramped, and hurt my neck. I went to try to push the door open, but couldn't because the door locks when closed so basically I was locked inside a cabinet inside a locked room with the key, locked in a drawer also inside the room. Once I realized how deep of sheet I was in I started screaming for my parents, but they couldn't hear me. It felt like hours, but was probably only like 20 minutes that I was screaming until I heard them come to the door and I yelled for them. They heard me and told me to unlock the door. I told them I was stuck and couldn't get out. I started crying thinking I would be stuck forever and my poor mom probably thinking how dumb I was. My mom told me to calm down, but I just cried more. My dad came back and unlocked the door using a spare magnetic key that he had on the upstairs bathroom. My mom scolded me, but they were relieved to see me not dead. After that I wasn't allowed to use the bathroom unsupervised until I proved responsible. LDR I locked myself in a cabinet during hide and seek and I couldn't get out. Oh boy, story time. So, when my brother and I were little, our dad would often have to go away on business trips. They weren't usually very long, just a couple of days, but we always had a blast with mom whenever he was gone. After dinner we would have popcorn and watch movies and play games until bedtime and then we got to sleep in mom's bed with her. Our favorite game was hide and seek, in the dark point we would wait till dark and then mom would light candles. And I was a champion hider. Well, one time I got the idea to hide under the table, but not just under the table. That would have been too obvious. Under the table, on top of the chairs, hidden completely by the tablecloth. I was a faking 5 year old ninja, one hand slash foot on each of the four chairs, holding myself up point of course, the table had a candle on it, and when I climbed under it, I moved the tablecloth just a bit, and all unnoticed, the candle tipped over they looked everywhere. Couldn't find me anywhere. Mom was certain I was hiding upstairs. Finally my brother said, I think she's probably downstairs. They came trundling down the stairs and saw that the whole table was on fire. Big huge flames mom screamed at me that the table was on fire and to get out from under the table. How she knew I was there, I don't know. Lord knows I have no grace whatsoever, except when it comes to hide and seek. I dropped to all fours and scrambled out from under that table faster than a cat fleeing a squealing toddler. Mom grabbed up the tablecloth and threw the whole thing in the sink point dad got home the next day and asked what the fuck had happened to the table. That was fun to explain. After that we had to use flashlights whenever we wanted to play point and that's the story of how I almost accidentally set the house on fire while playing hide and seek. When I was 12, on Halloween, some friends and I decided we could play hide and seek in the dark. And I mean total darkness. We pulled all shutters, closed all doors and even put some clothes on the second floor's bathroom little window point anyway. We start playing. We were having a great time. But it wasn't until we were playing for 2 hours when we heard, somewhere in the house, another worldly, terrifying scream, followed by the loudest, most blood curling scream I've ever heard. Me, being the imaginative kid I was, thought one of us ran into a ghost and had a heart attack. All of us, while absolutely terrified, faces white in sheer terror, some of us even crying, started searching for the corpse of our friend. Point turns out, my friend stomped one of my other friend's cat's tail while he was hiding. The cat attacked my friend and went to town on his face. When we turned all the lights on, we found him, face covered in blood, and the cat running across the house. We let out the biggest sigh of relief and bursted out laughing. All of us except, obviously, our beloved friend. We ended up calling our respective parents and called it a day. Funny thing is, the cat scratched my friend too deep in some places, most noticeably on his left eyebrow, where he has two scars going across it and another one on his forehead. 
we still bring it up from time to time, especially now that said cat sadly passed away two years ago. T didn't go horribly wrong but it completely destroyed me. It was the last day of 6th grade, we were doing outside events all day, bounce houses, picnics, and a 2 hour free time, because clearly we didn't get enough. Well during those 2 hours of free time everyone was bored, after playing all morning it felt like there was nothing to do so me and my group of friends got a bunch of people to play tag hide and seek, it was more of infection and not hide and seek, but anyway I was the fastest runner and best hider in the school. I found the best spot in a corner of the playground covered my back in the corner of the school, and in the tree I was hiding in was thick, so no teacher can call me out for being in a forbidden area, and so no other students could see me. While skipping forward I was the last man standing with near 50 students trying to find me, and I knew that my friends would get to my super hiding spot and moment, so I decided to move around the playground near the track. Sadly I was spotted, so I started running as quickly as I could to the track, but there was a chain fence. With 50 kids running after me, I decided to jump the fence, but my plan failed my shorts, and boxes were caught, and ripped all the way down the back, so I was just hanging there, but exposed stuck on the chain fence. That day I may have rose in height, but I've never fell so low before my entire school career was over, up until high school I was called hangman, it could have been worse, stories were passed on through the years of why people called me hangman, but eventually like all things the name died. I was around the age of 7, I might have been 8, my neighborhood at the time was a nice and safe one. There are a couple houses that were abandoned and would eventually get remodeled for families to live in. Me and other kids in the neighborhood would play outside a lot and would play hide and seek or house in those houses one day. A lot of us were out playing hide and seek. I hid in one of the houses with two other kids. Both of them hid in the upstairs part and I hid in the kitchen. A long time passed and I actually feel asleep. Personally that's weird because I never felt tired and was filled with anticipation. The things that happened while I was asleep or bad, and when I woke up, things got worse point apparently, while I was asleep, a lot of the other kids who were playing, got chased into the woods around two sides of the neighborhood by a back quote thing. The kids who hid upstairs in the house I was in had been attacked by a ghost or something. The kids in the forest ended up with injuries, and I woke up with cuts all over my back point. When I did finally wake up, the wind was going strong. It was loud, and I was horrified. I lived in Tornado Alley at the time, so you can imagine I was prepared for being flung into the next state if I went outside. I got really paranoid because of the silence, other than the raging wind. It took a lot for me personally to leave my hiding spot. I called out to the kids who should have been upstairs, but I only got the response of someone crying outside. When I went to the front door, I saw one of my friends, let's call him Sam, just lying there holding his leg. I rushed out and almost got knocked down by the wind point I helped Sam inside against his wishes. He told me we needed to go home and get away from the house. I was basically freaking out, but I was more scared of the possibility of a tornado happening. I asked him what happened and where our other friend was, but he said that they had to jump out of the window to get away, and he broke his leg and got left behind point I was really confused, but I could understand why he would want to leave, whatever happened must have been bad to make him jump out a third story window like that. Every time the house creak, which was often because of the wind, he would flinch violently. So I helped him out of the house and we took cover beside a different house. This house had people living in it, but they wouldn't answer the door. Me and Sam are both having panic attacks at this point. We just stayed out of the direct push of the wind for a long while, and we tried to calm down point the wind slowed down and eventually just stopped. I helped Sam up, and we headed towards our houses, but we were stopped by two of our other friends were playing hide and seek. They had come from the woods. One of them was 12, and so she carried Sam. They told us that they saw other run into the woods screaming and followed them not know what was happening. They apparently couldn't find where are the other kids went, so they came back out from the forest. They never experienced heavy winds. That's around the time the 12 year old noticed my back was scratched up and I was horrified. We all kinda freaked out point we went to Sam's house to drop him off 
and his parents we are pretty mad, and they got even more mad when we tried to explain what happened. Obviously, they didn't believe what we had said, and thought we were making excuses for playing too rough. It was infuriating, but I can realize how it would sound like a made up excuse point by the time I got home. My parents got mad as well, and didn't believe me at all point the next day, I went out to meet up with the 12 year old and the kid that was with her before. We went into the forest to look for the other kids, but didn't go too far, and came back out to the other kids playing around the neighborhood like normal. When we asked them what happened to them in the forest, they had no idea what we were talking about. When I asked the other kid that was hiding in the same house as me and Sam, she said she never hid there. We went to Sam's house to see if he was okay and see if he remembered anything, and he did. He remembered everything. Us four kinda freaked out over at point Sam ended up moving away a few months later, so did the kid that was with the 12 year old. Me and her were the only ones left in that neighborhood who remembered what happened, and it was really weird for us. We became closer with each other than anyone else in the neighborhood because of it. I still wonder if any of those other kids do remember what happened and just were too scared to say anything point I really wanna know what happened in the woods. Back in my early teens I lived on a huge square city block with a cul-de-sac in the middle. I bet there had to have been 10 to 15 kids living on this block and the entire middle of the block was one giant greenscape of small hills and shrubs with no fences for probably a quarter mile. Looking at it now this was the perfect childhood setup free of tech and just pure friendships outside all summer. You always knew whose house had everyone over from the parking lot of bikes in their front yard. All the parents knew each other, and the houses that didn't have kids were fine with us playing in the backyard so, as long as we didn't do any damage, or yell late at night point each night we'd be out till 10 to 11 doing flashlight tag, king of the hill and of course hide and seek in the dark point one night at the end of our game we were saying our goodbyes planning tomorrow's activities and someone noticed. One of the other kids littler sister, 10 or so, wasn't with a group. It took just a second and the group spread out through the yards looking for her running at full speed in all directions. I found her at the back of the block standing in the moonlight with a grown man with his arm out towards her just a mere few feet away from her. Everything seemed off hash s-h-e-e-t-b-r-i-c-k-s and something like lord of the flies I yelled out here. And 10 kids came running from all directions like a pack of raptors about to pounce on their kill. The man took off between two houses and we rushed her back to her house. The parents called the cops and they swarmed the backyards of course, to find no one in sight. Quite certain we prevented a child abduction that night and that pretty much killed our free rain summers. I was 12 years old at a friend's birthday party and we were playing manhunt similar to hide and seek in the woods in his backyard. I was the only girl at the party, so the birthday boy's mom was constantly making sure I wasn't bored or they weren't picking on me. We all went out to hide, and I found his nice tall tree to climb in and hide. About an hour went by and nobody found me. I could still hear the everyone else running around and playing. It started getting really dark, and about 3 hours in total had gone by, and I wondered if they forgot about me, but I also wanted to win really bad point the birthday boy's mom started freaking out I guess, because the boys told her they still couldn't find me. I still had no idea she was worried because I was up in my happy little tree. Some of the boys came back out to look for me and kept calling my name saying the game was over and me being the stubborn sheet I was didn't believe them and thought they were baiting me. The birthday boy's mom called my mom from inside the house and told my mom what was going on and that we were playing hide and seek in the woods, couldn't find me, etc. Having grown up in the woods my whole childhood, my mom didn't express any worry and explained that I was probably up in a tree somewhere. The birthday boy's mom came out at that point looking for me, and after that moment I knew I actually won the game, so I climbed out of the tree. I was worried that my mom would be pissed, but when we got in the car, after she picked me up, she was like did you win? I told her I how and she said, that's my girl. I babysit the neighbor's kids. They were about 4 and 9 at the time. They loved to play hide and seek then and still do now. We decided to play hide and seek in their house one day because it was raining outside. I explained to them that we should only play on the entrance level floor and the upstairs because the 4 year old was scared of going into the basement by himself, especially when all the lights were off. 
We played a couple rounds and everything was fine. I went to the designated area and began counting. I found the 9 year old fairly quickly, in about 10 minutes or so. However, for the life of me, I could not find the 4 year old. He was really small, so I had to check places like the cupboards and the pantry and really small places like that, yet I couldn't find him. I checked everywhere, 2 or 3 times before finally asking his sister where he was. She sort of did this nervous giggle and I, of course, became suspicious. I asked again, and she giggled and pointed towards the basement stairs. I ran down the stairs and pretty much flew down the pitch black hallway, where I could hear his cries becoming louder the closer I got to the back room. I flung open the door, and called to him, not even bothering with the lights. He came barreling into my arms, crying the hardest I'd ever seen. He'd been down there maybe, 20 to 30 minutes. When I finally got him calmed down enough to tell me what happened, he said his sister tricked him into going down there by promising she would stay with him the whole time, pretending to use the bathroom, and then never returning. He was absolutely torn up about this, scared to death that the monsters in the basement would eat him. It took me another 15 minutes to calm him down point it's safe to say that we don't play hide and seek anymore. So me and my brother had best friends that practically lived at our house. They were cousins and lived in the same house. Literally school breaks and summer they were at our house 70-90% of the time. My mom took them home so they could do their chores and pick them up an hour or two later. We were all in high school and my parents went out so we decided to play a game of hide and seek in the dark. There were 6 of us, boyfriend 1, boyfriend 2, me, brother, stepbrother, and baby brother. The youngest was made to stay in his room because we blacked out the house and the front and backyards were in play. In the driveway was an old metal tailor for transporting my stepdad's holly. So we are running around all up and through the house and yards, then right as my parents pull up, boyfriend 1 is running and slides to get away from whoever was it and her foot goes under the trailer. Well she goes from laughing and giggling to freaking the fuck out. My mom rushes over, only to discover she had sliced her foot open. So mom does mom things. Cleans gravel and dirt out, wraps it and puts me and her in the van, to take her to her guardian, so she can go to the hospital. Call on the way and boyfriend too mom comes to the door like here is her insurance card, let me know if you need anything else when you get to the hospital. We got to the hospital and boyfriend one has to get a ton of stitches. We leave hours later, and she just comes back to our house. My mom band hide, and go seek in the dark outside. I was on an extended family trip to Florida. We rented a house on VRBO, and we were having a great time one night we decided to play hide and seek, and I ended up hiding under a bed on my iPad 3 for about a half hour. I gave up, and went downstairs, because it sounded like a lot of commotion was going on down there as I got to where everyone was, I saw all three of my cousins crying, and my parents and aunts all looking very concerned and creeped out. Turns out, all three of them heard a deep quiet voice, as soon as my brother opened the door to the room I was hiding and they all claim, to have heard their own names being called from the darkness coming from the same place, but nobody was there except for me, and I swear to god I kept quiet the scary thing is, I didn't hear anything except for the door knob to my hiding spot opening. It really disturbed them, and it scared me into a state of paranoia too, because I was the youngest one in my entire family, and to see my older brother and cousins that scared, meant it was a pretty serious thing. To this day, 7 years later, my family still thinks it was me. The fact that nobody is admitting that it was them makes it even scarier, because it definitely wasn't me, and 7 years later, you would think it wouldn't be that big of a deal to admit it. Point TLDR, played a game of hide and seek and a demonic ghost whispers into my family's ears when attempting to enter a room. Oh my god thanks op for posting this, this is my time to shine point. When I was 14, last summer, I started to sneak out. I finally grew the balls to leave the house when it was like 12 o'clock. Now keep in mind that I have religious and strict parents. So, at the beginning of the week, I started to sneak out on my own. It went very well, and I would go out with one of my friends to vape and sheet point I did it every day except for a Wednesday for being kind of tired. I did this for 3 weeks before I got caught. It was so crazy and had so much adrenaline doing it. 
One time, we were walking down this sidewalk to find people having sex in it. It was rocking around, and they finally left at some point. I'm such a cork block, so for the story to make sense, you gotta know that before all of this, we wear two single blocks in our neighborhood connected together. Around that, just dirt. So they started to dig and remove grass for the future houses. During the day, my friends and I would ride our bikes in the dirt hills. It was so much fun. So basically, construction happening. All the time point that night it all went to hell, I decided to stay and sleep. I didn't want to go out, but my brother wanted to with one of his friends. I really insisted to not go, but he dragged my ass out of bed anyways. We both get out, and I show him the half-built houses that we would hang out in. While we were wandering, I see two people. How perfect, they were friends of mine, and they were waiting for more. So me plus my brother, there was five people that night point at first we hung out, and we were getting bored, so we decided to play hide and seek. We would hide in one of the many houses, and wait for the seekers to find us. We would let them know if they found us by knocking or whistling. This added a new component. Go into the pitch black house, and get ready for the jump scare of your life. I could go on and on, but yeah. Great fun so my brother comes up to me saying I think there is someone else out there. They have a different flashlight, and they sound heavier, the ground was still dirt. So us three start to walk away. When we are walking, a car turns and appears, I'd be completely fine, except it had those six mini round lights at the top like most cop cars had. I instantly knew it was a cops. I expected them to ask what we were doing and let us return home, but no. Not one, not two, not three, but seven faking cop cars pull up point I was in shock and accepted my defeat. I knew I screwed up and I imagined how mad my parents would be. I hoped that my parents would pick us up for I don't know what reason. We sat there for an hour, they were looking for anyone else, or drugs. We didn't have any, that night point so us three got busted, the third guy got a write down for burglary because he picked up three rusty used staples from the ground. They were faking useless. I bet they were pissed that they had to do sheet so early in the morning, so they wrote us down for anything in the book point, so I learned the law of curfew and when not to be out at night. I had to write a two page essay on the section of the curfew law, and I had to pay a fine of $200 bucks. From my money point the two other people escaped, and the police don't know they were in the game, so I think they won. I haven't been out late since. I definitely learned my lesson with that questions, ah welcome I type this on a phone, so apologies to incorrect spelling, or improper usage point to long to read, I played the most expensive game of hide, and go seek by being, out late, 7 police cars, and $200 fine. Also a mark on my record, yay.